Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ulfa Nabila binti Muhammad Khalil, metric number 2113334 and I'm one of the group members of A for Shari. Alongside with me presenting today are firstly Himya, secondly Nur Hilbi Rayan and thirdly Nur Farha Nazira. However, before we delve deeper into the topic which was given to us, which is constitutional status and the origin of Malay reservation land, we would like to first thank Dr. Khairil Azmin for giving us the golden opportunity to present the topic before you. Before we begin our presentation, we would first like to go through with you the, our presentation outline, which are as follow. First and foremost, the introduction, constitutional status, the origin of Malay reservation land, the significance of Malay reservation land, as well as the implementation of Malay Reservation Land and the current challenges as well as the conclusion. For delving deeper into the presentation, we will be first defining the words that will be used throughout this presentation in order for the better understanding of our presentation. The first definition that we will be discussing is on the Malay Reservation Land, which is as such. Malay Reservation Lands are lands that a Malay owns and that land cannot be sold, transferred or leased to anyone other than a Malay. The reason for reserving land is for certain public purposes and land might be conserved for a certain class or group of people for their sustenance and to prevent extinction, in this case the Malays. Section 5 of the National Land Code states that reserved land is land that is currently set aside for a public purpose under Section 62 or any other land law. In Malaysia, it must be known to everyone that there is a special position reserved for the Malays and Malay Reservation land is a special right and one of the traditional elements of the federal constitution. This position was further strengthened by Article 19 of the Federation of Malaya Agreement 1948. It states that it is the High Commissioner's job to protect the rights, powers and dignity of Malay rulers as well as the unique position of the Malays and the legitimate interests of other communities. This was where Article 153 of the Federal Constitution originated. On the other hand, the constitutional status, the origin of the Malay Reservation land, significance, objectives and implementations will be thoroughly discussed by my group mates. I will now pass the floor to, my, to the next presenter, which is Hilmia. Hi, I'm Hilmia. So, I will be discussing on the topic of constitutional status. So, in Article 89, it says about the Malay reservations. The definition in this article is the land reserved for alienation to Malays or to natives of the state in which it lies. So, Malay includes any person who under the law of the state in which he is resident is treated as a Malay for the purpose of the reservation land. Initially, the Red Commission found that the spatial position of the Malays has been reaffirmed from time to time and recognized. So the Commission recommended that there should be no further Malays reservations except when a new development area is established a portion of which may be reserved and when any reserved land ceases to be reserved. We bring the case of Muthammah Anak Perempuan Govindan and Masri bin Muhammad and another. So the Malay reservations enactments of the Malay declares that the Malays should have their interest in the land they possess protected. So this is applicable under um, the states of Negeri Sembilan, Pahang, Perak, Selangor and also the federal territory. Also, there are several Malay reservations enactment under the state of Kelantan, Kedah, Johor, Terengganu and also the Article 89 of the federal constitution. This case says that the plaintiff gave an affidavit stating that the aforementioned area is now recognized as Malay Reserve Territory. So this puts the subject of a Malay Reserve Area front and center. So the legislation can be distilled as follows 
from the accessible sources. Any effort selling or disposing of Malay reserve land in violation of the Malay reservations. According to the relevant enactments, the enactments of each Malaysian are state in value. So, in the case of Kapusin and Haji Rahim bin Haji Muhammad Nur, the Lin judge was satisfied that it is legally forbidden to attach any Malay reserve land or possession that belongs to a Malay as part of an execution. In another case of Idris bin Haji Muhammad Amin and Ng Asiu, saying that relations with such land or holding it on behalf of someone who isn't a Malay through a power of attorney. The last case of the topic for the constitutional status will be Tan Hong Chi and Lim Kin Wan in our assignment. So it would be ideal to mention that the provisions of the National Land Code 1965 do not apply to Malay reservation lands unless there are express provisions to the contrary. So this says that there are non Malays who once possessed property that was afterwards included in a Malay reservation. These non Malays are allowed to make dealings in favor of non Malays. So next, the origin of Malay reservation land. The concept of Malay reservation land itself was originally introduced by the British in the Federation Malay States in 1913 for the particular federated Malay states of Paham, Perak, Negeri Sembilan and Selangor. And basically, it aimed to control the power of land alienation by the state and prevent Malay, and prevent Malay land owners from selling their lands to non-Malays. This enactment was first established back then due to an issue that involved the sale of Malay land that occurred in 1908, which has been addressed for the first time in the conference of the residents of the four federated Malay states. And the issue was caused by the development of the colonial capitalist economy, which led to drastic increments in the immigrant population and substantial growth in rice consumption, which affected paddy production. The British then introduced this enactment to preserve the land to the Malays in order to curb Malay patients who diverted away from their traditional agricultural activities and to minimize the loss of foreign exchange that came from a rise in rice import activities. Furthermore, the development in the Malay states also gave rise to an influx of immigrants in the employment sector owing to British colonial policy especially those who, those who came from China, where they were very anxious to possess the land in the Malay states. And at that time, the Malays also tend to sell, to sell and lease their land to the non-Malays in exchange for monetary consideration due to the poverty crisis. And consequently, these acts would inevitably affect the political power of the Malays in their own country. Besides that, another reason for this establishment is to prevent the prominence of the Chinese community which secretly formed their societies and earned economic dominance in Malaysia compared to other immigrants. Hence, these circumstances have given a threat to the British administration where it would seize their land as the most valuable community at the time. Furthermore, this um, reservation apparently was not exclusive to the Malay reservation land but also included several types of land that could only be owned or dealt with by Malays, such as the Malay holdings, Sultanate land, Malacca customary land, Malay agricultural settlements, and the customary retainer of Negeri Sembilan. And then, uh, a proposal for this enactment was coming up by RJB Clayton, who is District Officer of Ululangat, and asked for the protection of the Malay land. And subsequently, this issue uh, reappeared at the Conference of Residents in November 1911 and got unanimously agreed upon by the four British residents, the Chief Secretary and the High Commissioner. Therefore, the enactment was passed on January 1, 1913 and it was applicable to all Malay states. This Malay Reservation enactment 1913 was repeated starting on 15 December 1933 and is replaced by the Reservation Enactment 1933. And in 1935, the Malay Reservation Enactment of 1933 was reviewed and republished as the Malay Reservation Enactment. 
where it was uh, it has been used until today. Assalamualaikum. My name is Nur Hidayat and my metric number two one one four five two eight. Now we proceed with the significance of Malay reservation land. So the purpose of the Malay reservation land is to prohibit non-Malays from owning the government on land called Malay reservation area and also to limit private uh, transaction involving land owned by the Malays. This proclamation of Malay reservation land was made by the British to maintain the Malays' entitlement to property ownership in Peninsula Malaysia. However, there was a sudden surge in land sales by the on Malay landowners to immigrant foreigners because the Malay society during that time faced property issue. In addition, the significance of Malay reservation land is to prevent the Chinese community from gaining economic dominance in Malaysia. Besides, it also to avoid any charges for closure, as it is one of the common ways that the land, uh, Malay land was transferred to the non-Malay during that time, because Malay had a practice of charging or granting a lien over their land to the charges. So here we can see that the importance of Malay reservation land was to safeguard the long-term interest of the Malayan states. However, some people are concerned about this proclamation of Malay reservation land as it makes things worse for Malays because Malay already had a poor economic during that time and the limitation of any private transaction involving land owned by the Malays from uh, Malay reservation land make it difficult for them to sell their land and also their involvement in the land matter. Consequently, uh, Malays were impacted or affected by these land regulations. Next, moving on to the implementation of Malay reservation land. So basically, there are two different forms of the Malay Reservation Enactment that has been produced based on the history, which is a single uniform law known as Malay Reservation Enactment 1913 that has been used in the four federated Malay states, which is Perak, Pahang, Negeri Sembilan and Selangor. And the other one is the five states enactment, which was applicable to all states in Peninsula Malaysia, which is the unfederated states such as Kelantan, Kedah, Perlis, Johor and Terengganu except for Penang and Malacca and all these states were modeling the original Malay Reservation Enactment 1913 in order to ensure the safety and the privileges of Malay's land to not be confiscated in their own states. The implementation of the Malay Reservation Land Enactment was enforced under the jurisdiction of each respective state where it had been used widely in other states since the enforcement of the Malay Reservation Enactment in 1913. This enactment was applicable from the era of post merdeka until now. However, there are a few provisions and the nature of the enactment that was considered to be kind of uh, defeating the objective of Malay Reservation Land since the interpretation varies in each state's enactment. It is in their obscure definitions of Malay and native uh, the method of alienation, revocation, declaration, or types of land that have created considerable disagreement and uncertainty for the Malays. And this enactment consists of the law that regulates the Malay land, where uh, the Malay's land cannot be so leased or disposed of to any person who does not officially belong to the Malay race. It is only specified to a Malay person, Malay company, or Malay corporation that has been ensured in the schedule of the enactment may possess Malay reservation land. And it means that the Malay landowner cannot transfer or charge his land to a non-Malay. It is also strictly prohibited for any dealing concerning Malay reservation land to be executed in favour of a person who is not a Malay, although in a power of attorney. Next, let's continue with the current challenges of Malay Reservation Land. As you can see in the slide, there are four challenges. The first one is market value, second one, ignorance of purpose, third one, locality and infrastructure, and the last one is efficiency of Malay Reservation Land restriction. The first challenge is market value. The market value of the Malay Reservation Land year by year had been decreased compared to the non Malay Reservation Land because the landowner does not give proper compensation after the government acquired their land since there was no replacing land and the land replaced does not have the same worth as the one that they give to the government. In some cases, the acquisition of Malay Reservation land for the public development was done without any replacement. The reason why this happened is because of the difficulties to replace the land since the land that had been left is not suitable to replace the land acquired. In addition, the limitation for the development of Malay Reservation land was limited only to Malay developers had contributed to the market value to be low 
uh, does people prefer to buy housing land instead of buying Malay Reservation land? The second challenge is ignorance of the purpose. The Malay Reservation Act 1913 prefaced state that the reservation main objective is to provide uh, for securing the Malays in their interest in the land. In addition, according to Johor Malay Reservation Enactment 1936, the goal of this enactment is to keep Malay land interest in Malay hands. However, there was an amendment made by the government which revised the clause to permit businesses and corporations to engage with property used as a Malay reservation. This is was done for the purpose of allowing development and also to improve the economic standing of Malays who own the reservation land. This situation might be an open gate for the non-Malay or even the foreigner to possess the land. Therefore, the lawmakers need to take into consideration all aspects and all consequences when they enact or uh, amend any provision in order to preserve the Malay reservation land in future. The third challenge is locality and infrastructure, where the most of the land declared to be Malay reservation land was village land or west land, where the value of the land was low during the British government. It is also uh, located in rural places with poor infrastructure and accessibility. And the Malay reservation land that exists nowadays still in the location with poor infrastructure, limited access, and it was located in land which caused the owner abandon it. Um, here we can see that it is hard for the Malay reservation land to be developed by the owner because of the infrastructures and facilities provided uh, in the Malay reservation land by the government are not enough to support the land development. Last but not least, the challenge is the efficiency of Malay reservation land restriction. The factor to the reduction in Malay reservation area is that Malay society lack of exposure and also the knowledge about the Malay reservation land itself. From the research conducted on the level of knowledge owned by the landowner about Malay reservation land, only 30% had high knowledge compared to 58% admitted that they have a medium level of knowledge. So here it shows that most of the owner had yet to have a good exposure on how to deal with or to manage their land properly. Because of the lack of knowledge and exposure on Malay reservation land, it has led to the irresponsibility of certain land owners who would sell their land to the non malays even there was a list of business that are suitable to conduct for the land uh, transaction with the owner of Malay reservation land which prepared by all of the Malaysian states. Thank you for the elaboration on the current challenges. So we will be moving on to the conclusion. It can be concluded that there is a reserved place for Malays in Malaysia and Malay Reservation Land is a historic component of the Federal Constitution as Article 89 Clause 6 of the Federal Constitution specifies Malay Reservation as land earmarked for alienation to Malays and indigenous people of the state. It is the responsibility of the High Commissioners to safeguard the rights, powers and dignity of the Malay rulers together with the interests of other communities. The Malay Reservation enactment stipulates that the Malay's interest in the land they own shall be safeguarded. The National Land Code of 1965 does not apply for Malay Reservation areas unless expressly stated otherwise. Article 89 Clause 6 of the Federal Constitution stipulates the meaning of Malay Reservation and the first implementation was in the Federation of Malay States Enactment 1913. The Malay Reservation Enactment of 1933 was intended to limit the state's ability to alienate land. Its drafts by R.J.B. Clayton for Malay land to be protected after Malay people faced poverty and land was leased or sold to non-Malay individuals. Moreover, the Malay Reservation Land Enactment was put into effect under the control of each state and it has been widely applied in other states which are still in effect from time to time of Mer after Merdeka until the present. The market value, ignorance of its purpose, locality and infrastructure, and the efficiency of its restrictions are among the challenges of the Malay Reservation land. When enacting or amending the provision, it is essential for legislators to evaluate all potential repercussions. In addition to that, government provided infrastructure and amenities in Malay Reservation land are sufficient to promote land development. Thus, the government should take action to enhance all the facilities in that area and be aware of the issues happening relating to the Malay Reservation land. 
Consequently, it may be deduced that Malays have a special place and that Malay reservation land is a special right and the traditional part of the federal constitution. And that concludes the end of our presentation on the topic of constitutional status of the Malay reservation land. Thank you once again, Dr. Khairil Azmin, for giving us the opportunity to present. We thank you and we hope you have benefited from the presentation. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah wa rudu wal inayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.